what I love about Lynx is it really draws together professionals from every spectrum and facet of the ecosystem. And I'm a little biased, but cybersecurity is the common question across every project, mm. platform, and protocol. And this is, it's a foundation really of the ecosystem. And so it's a complex ecosystem as well. And sure. so thankfully we have your expertise to help distill down some of that complexity as it pertains to users, security of exchanges and the ecosystem. So we'll dive right in because there's a lot going on. First off, Philip, please tell us a bit more about your role and mission at Coinbase. Sure. So I lead security at Coinbase and the chief security officer. Uh, I've been at Coinbase, it'll be seven years next week, um, which in crypto years is something like 100 years, <laughs> approximately. Um, and so I lead Coinbase's overall security organization, cybersecurity, physical security, privacy, uh, and, and a bunch of other stuff there as well. Um, and in particular, uh, am, am involved pretty closely with our, uh, our customer, our user, our, our, yeah, our ecosystem security efforts. And about how many assets under management, how many customers? We oh gosh, you should, you should look at the website because the assets number changes with the wins, um, of course. Uh, but let's, let's round numbers, let's call it uh, 90 billion or so um, in assets and over 100 million customers worldwide. So you sleep well at night. So <laughs> that's that's. I sleep it. like a baby. I, I, bet, I bet. So we'll, we'll get more into that in a minute. So you mentioned uh, you know the dog years of crypto yeah. for sure. So how has that threat environment changed since you first started? I mean, fluctuations in pricing, new product offering, new coins. Tell us a little bit about that evolution yeah. since you started. It's actually it's so it's one of the things I enjoy the most about about Coinbase is I see the future. Um, and what I mean by that is um, we see attackers innovate more aggressively, more quickly um, in cryptocurrency than any industry I've ever seen before. We see, um, we see attackers' new playbooks run on, uh, on you know, places like Coinbase before they make it mainstream and scalable. Um, and, and, and in that, I think we're able to get some really interesting insights into how attackers think, how they innovate, and what's coming. That's incredibly interesting. Um, so let's focus on the threat to customers yeah. and users. So what are you seeing as the biggest threat to customers right now? So uh, I, I, let me give you a specific answer first. Uh, or, or I'll give you a specific answer, but, but yeah. I think the actual largest threat to, to customers, to users of, of cryptocurrency right now is the fact that no one learned about good cybersecurity at home all right, right? Like, so we all learned, right? You all went on vacation, you put your lights on a timer. Uh, you stop mail delivery so that there's not a pile of newspapers in the front. Like, we all learned these things growing up. Um, almost, you know, almost sort of uh, via, via environmental the acquisition. Um, and, and none of us learned about two-factor authentication from our parents, right? None of us learned about password hygiene and password managers and all this stuff. None of us learned this stuff from our parents. Hopefully this you know, um, this next generation, or well, maybe a couple generations from now, uh, will will start will start to do that. But what that means is that we are doing the equivalent of walking down dark alleys carrying bags of cash, as as people on the internet today, and outside of just crypto, right? Just being uh, uh, present on the internet um, and having more and more of our lives present on the internet. I think this is this is a skills gap that um, we have to invest in remedying um, both now and, and for future generations. Now, the specific tactical answer to your question, um, what is causing the most harm to consumers right now, I would say are scams. Right now, I think the, the, the flavor of the month is pig butchering, right? Which um, has, been, has been all the rage to talk about. Really, that's just uh, a, a, an iteration of a confidence scam, right? Uh, or a romance scam. But uh, but like right now, that's what we're seeing um, consumers hit mo the most by. That's really uh, no. I think it would surprise many that the chief security officer at Coinbase is is interested or involved in combating the pig butchering problem. Um, you know, from a security standpoint, like how like why has that risen to your attention? Well, you know, I pay a lot of attention to how our attackers evolve in general. Um, this is a very trite saying, right? But 
Um, but no one's going to teach you like your attackers will. No one, no one will show you where you need to grow and develop and, and, and do better as, as well or as thoroughly as an attacker. Um, and so I pay a lot of attention to how, how are attackers moving, how are they evolving, how are they growing. Um, and in particular, attackers are like anyone else who innovates, right? They try a bunch of stuff. A lot of it fails. A lot of it's not good. It goes away, right? And they'll, and they'll double down on, on what works. Um, and so when we see things like pig butchering um, start to, to spread and become, become more widespread, in general, we sit up and pay attention and ask ourselves, you know, what can we do? And pig butchering is interesting in particular because it's multi-platform. Right, yeah. Coinbase sees the, uh, to the extent we see, we see the very end of the of the thing, but right. it's hopped between maybe a, a dating a dating app or, uh, or potentially even like just random text messaging. Maybe it went into a traditional like a WhatsApp or a Signal or Telegram or whatever. It went around there for a while. It might hit other financial platforms too, and so no one has the full picture. And, and I think it's it's very interesting from our perspective to 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 work with other platforms and to start to, to, to help to form sort of the whole picture of this thing yeah. so we can all figure out what's going on and fight it together. Yeah, no, it's, a, it's certainly a devastating problem and a devastating scale. Um, and I wanna go back to what you said earlier about you know our parents didn't teach us these, these cyber hygiene practices. And I think many of us find ourselves teaching our parents those, oh, yeah. right? And as an industry, we kind of bemoan sitting around the, the Chris Mahana Kwanzaa table with our relatives and having to explain what we do. But the second mom or grandma at, you know, express interest in investing, it, that, that conversation quickly becomes a security conversation mm -hmm. um, just because of the complexity. So um, what are some things and innovations that Coinbase is doing to try to cut through some of that complexity? You know, I think the most important thing is education. All right. Um, because scammers, tactics, techniques change, right? The scammers are just as innovative. There, there's the classic, right? Attackers have budgets and bosses too, right? Uh, attackers innovate too, right? So whatever tactical fix anyone anyone puts out for in any platform, in any industry, anywhere, an attacker will eventually innovate around, right? That's just a thing. That's, that's the continual arms race. What the attacker has a harder time innovating around is when you can raise the level of awareness of their intended victims, right? So they understand, and this is why it's so important that, right, the pig butchering is talked about, the other scams are, are, are talked about and spoken about, um, is because when that awareness is there, when you have an educated consumer, um, they are more likely to spot the warning signs, they're more likely to disengage, and that's, that's ultimately the goal here, right, it, it is not that there is some sort of, you know, big brother, all encompassing, you know, nanny state saying you can do this, you can't do this, right? It's that we have educated, aware, concerned consumers who are then able to use tools that we and others provide to protect themselves. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think these, these scams have become more organized, too. And as you mm -hmm. said, they've evolved um, and you face some of the most sophisticated adversaries in, in cyberspace right now. And, and scams are you know, raking in you know, incredible volume as we saw from the FBI IC3 report uh, recently. So let's talk shift to talk about threats to the company, the, yeah. to Coinbase as an exchange. Um, what are, so for the audience, like what are some similarities and differences in defending a cryptocurrency business versus say a financial institution or bank? Yeah, it's a very, very common question. I would say, um, you know, very, very exact answer. It's 99.94% the same. Wow, you guys are dead. Point nothing? Four. Not a chart, nothing? The point Come on. Four. What is that? Um, okay. it, it's, it's extremely similar, right? Because the difference is in largely what the attacker is after. And certainly the techniques around, around storing cryptocurrency, right, are, are, are different than we would see uh, anywhere else, right? But when we think about how do attackers attack Coinbase, it's the same way they attack, you know, JP Morgan or Bank of America or, or anywhere else, right? They're using phishing, they're using application security issues, they're, 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 they're using this, all the same tools, tactics, techniques they would to go to go anywhere else. Now, one of the differences is in the, the, that I see at Coinbase versus other platforms is in the the focus that attackers have on us um, because it's easier to monetize cryptocurrency than it is to monetize 
other stuff they might steal, PII, credit cards, whatever. Um, uh, and in the amount of money they're willing to spend, right? We've seen, um, we, did, we did a blog series back in 2019 on an attack. And so it's, it's, it's easy to talk about, where we estimate the attacker spent a couple of million dollars executing that attack between the, the cost of the O days, the infrastructure that they burned in the attack, et cetera, et cetera. Um, they, they probably spent a couple million dollars attacking Coinbase, which is, which is not what we see normally in, wow. in, the, in like the broader cyber uh, uh, threat space. Wow, that's incredible. So, uh, you know, and it's specific to Coinbase, but I imagine the entire ecosystem is facing, you know, something mm -hmm. like that. So what kind of communication or intelligence sharing do you have with, with the ecosystem? I mean, that's, a great, that's, that's a great question, threat? right? So like we're FSISAC members, a number of other US-based uh, cryptocurrency firms are as well, and that certainly helps. But I think one of the unique pieces about cryptocurrency is its, is its global distributed nature, um, right? And, and that, that goes for participants in the space as well. Um, and so Coinbase, we spend a bunch of time, I think actually you know a number of our threat intelligence folks, but we spend a bunch of time connecting with peer exchanges, other participants in the ecosystem, because we know that shared defense is, is the best defense. We know that the knowledge sharing um, is what will get us all through an attack by a focused, dedicated, committed adversary. Um, we know that we can learn from, from others' experiences in this space. Um, and so we go seek those out. Now, I think um, uh, there's a lot that could, be, that could be improved, right? I think we could get a lot better at, at uh, sharing within the crypto space, for sure. Um, but but even, even now, even looking back you know, on, on the, the previous few years, I think it's gotten uh, uh, much, much, much better than when it than it was even you know four years ago. Yeah. Well, so I teased you a little bit at the beginning about yeah. sleeping well, despite your immense yep. responsibilities, um, and and that's amid record highs in terms of stolen funds and uh, mainly targeting cryptocurrency businesses, mainly conducted by North Korea. So. Um, but yet we haven't read a headline that Coinbase has been hacked yet. And why, why is that? And you know, why are you sleeping so well? Yeah, um, there's a bunch of reasons for that, I think. There, if, if, there was a, if there was like a single thing I could tell you, um, I would be up here as the CEO of a company selling that single thing to, <laughs> to the entire industry, right? Tell us the secret to cybersecurity. Um, in reality, what it is is I have an, I have an excellent team um, Coinbase has invested in security for uh, the entire life of the company, right? When I when I when I joined Coinbase seven years ago, I talked to Brian. He was telling me stories about like you know building Coinbase and like seeing the SQL injection at, at attempts come in from the very very early days, um, and this visceral sense of like we have to protect our what customers have trusted us with, right? And that's. That has really been a through line of Coinbase since the very, very beginning. Um, and so what that has meant is we've built in security from very, very early in a way that is, that is very uncommon, um, right? And, and this, yes, I'm referring to technology, but I'm also referring to people and like mindsets and values and principles and how the, how the organization is run, right? I, I say a lot of times, a lot of my peers spend their days arguing why security? Right, like why is security important? Why should we invest in this? I have never had to have that argument. I can argue how security, how do we implement it? What are the trade-offs? Like what's the right way to approach this problem? That's a lovely argument. I'll have that argument every day, all day. It's wonderful. Um, but even that very small difference, I think makes a huge difference in how the organization shows up, right? What we do, how, we're, how we are resilient. Um, and then the other piece of it is that we, uh, I'm a big fan of the, of the Mike Tyson quote, right? Everyone has a, good, has a plan to get punched in the face, <laughs> right? Um, it's true. For those of you who have not been punched in the face, it is a <laughs> life-altering experience. Um, but the important th thing about that is, is the realization that it's actually a hopeful message, right? That if you plan to get punched in the face, then you're in the fight, right? And so we realize so we're not going to be able to prevent all the punches to the face, but we have to plan for after that, right? So we've focused very heavily on 
Um, not just like do making all the right choices to prevent a cyber thing from ever happening. That's that's not impossible. We plan for the response. We plan for the reaction. We plan for the ability of Coinbase the company to be resilient in the face of these long term, high intensity uh, uh, focused attacks. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. And so in many ways, it's almost um, a benefit that you know there's probably no manual on your desk when you started how to yeah, defend no, cryptocurrency. No, no, there was um, no manual. There was no manual. No. <laughs> but you were able to build in security from the foundations, which is you know an incredible, um, incredible ability. Um, and so let's focus on threats to the crypto economy. So we talked a little bit about um, the you know North Korean APT adversaries. Um, can you tell us a little bit about um, other topics that you engage on, and including like when do you involve public sector into these conversations yeah. that you're finding? Um, so, look, I, I think cybersecurity again. Let's let's beyond even beyond cryptocurrency, right? Cybersecurity is a team sport. Um, it's something that we we think um, needs to involve both public and private. Uh, uh, elements to it. We engage, you know, broadly, Coinbase does, with uh, governments around the world in cybersecurity, right? Um, both in terms of, uh, you know, working with them on adversaries who attack the space, um, as, as well as on helping them understand the space a little bit better, right? And so when I think about, about these sort of ecosystem uh, threats, you know, uh, as, I, as, I, as I sometimes say to the team, like, look, you know, we can't obviously go fly into wherever and arrest somebody as much as we would like to some days, right? What we can do is spend the time to work with those partners and make it, make it extremely easy for them to prosecute that case um, in order to protect the larger ecosystem, right? So um, I, I have a background in, in the military, so, so I, I will... I will Sometimes casually drop in the, in the conversation terms like targeting packages that then by non-military friends are like, tar with targeting power? <laughs> is there a drone strike involved here? <laughs> no, no. Um, but w we really, we really do um, follow that ethos of, of saying, look, we know these adversaries are out there. We're tracking them. We're watching their activities. Whether they, they intersect with Coinbase or not, today, they probably will at some point. Um, so if we can put together a comprehensive targeting package and hand it off to a law enforcement agency that can actually take action on it, that's a win for us and the ecosystem. And we're, and we're very, very focused on executing that mission. That's fantastic, that's fantastic. And um, do you have any advice, um, going back to cyber hygiene, for individual customers, users, what they can do today to better protect them? Password manager, unique passwords, the best two-factor authentication available on a platform for Coinbase and keys. Um, that right there, is 90% of the ballgame if you do those two things. Um, for Coinbase specifically, use the Coinbase Vault, which is which is a feature that not a ton of people use. It's a it's a time, it's a withdrawal time delay feature basically on the platform that lets you say, this money is this money's going over here. Um, if I want to touch it, I have to wait at least 48 hours in order to touch it with a lot of other notifications. It's a huge speed bump for attackers. Wow. Right? So those three things. Um, and that is a very strong posture versus the attacks that we see targeting, uh, targeting consumers. Um, on the scam side, what I tell people um, is, is try this technique. And this is what I told my parents and, and I would, anyone who, who you're concerned about um, falling for a scam, is, here's what I would encourage you to, 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 to encourage them to do, is when, when they are about to make a decision, a financial decision, what they should do before they make that decision is take a rubber ducky, put her on their desk, and explain what they are about to do to that rubber ducky, <laughs> right? And if at any point during that explanation, <laughs> they feel that that rubber ducky is judging them, they need to stop, right? You're, you would be shocked how well this works, right? Just verbalizing, I am going to X, Y, Z, Q, right, whatever. At some point, the vast majority of people will stop themselves and say like, that's dumb. Why would I do that, right? So if they feel that rubber ducky is giving them the eye, they should just not do that thing, 
right? That, that, that is my advice. I love that. Um, I need that every time I go in the hairdresser asking for bangs. <laughs> uh, I that. Um, I'm going to send you a rubber ducky after this. No, that, that's great advice. That's great advice. Is there anything uh, particularly um, surprising or uh, interesting that's occurred recently that, you know, I would don't want to say impressed because I don't want to glorify these attackers, but where you, you, you know, it, it gave you such chills. Hmm. That's a hard question. Um, because, I mean, look, I, 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 I say, so the thing, this, this partly answers your question, so, so I'll, I'll go with it. But the thing I'm looking at right now and having sort of those, those anticipatory chills, um, hmm. and, and I apologize in advance for the buzzword bingo entry here. He's doing it. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. doing it. Is, it. is generative AI and its, yep. impact, and its impact on account takeover specifically. So if we look back, if we look back to um, the rise of sim swapping, Right, which kicked off. We probably saw the first one uh, six years ago, five years ago, six years ago, something like that. Um, but it's become an epidemic, right? Why did it become an epidemic? It became an epidemic because it went from a high skilled activity to a um, an outsourced feature that you could just, you know, get on the right forum and ask someone to do for you. You could outsource it, right? It was no longer this sort of like a uh, thing that only a few people could do. Um, today, I think that the same thing is true when we're talking about generating fake documents, fake identity documents, yeah. right? For use in online identity, identity verification. Um, you know, we see the whole gamut from really terrible um, to identity documents that I look at, and I legitimately, I've said this several times, I look at it and think, this person should have had a career in Hollywood. Should have had a career as a graphic as a graphic artist. Should have been a, like it's that high quality. Um, generative AI is going to democratize that whole thing. There will be no more bad identity document fakes online. They're all going to be good. They're all going to be that high end quality, and that's going to make the sort of the IDV flow, especially in a world where there's no consistent back end verification of these documents across countries, much harder. Right, so that wow. gives me sort of the preemptive chills of yeah. what will probably be coming. No, that that's incredibly insightful. Um, yeah, <laughs> that's a challenge. That's a problem. Um, I know we're running up on time. Philip, is there anything else you want to leave us with? Maybe a positive note after. <laughs> well, I think some of that was positive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it, he gave you a, a buzzword bingo. Uh, buzzword bingo. I, I hope you guys yeah, yeah. get on the card. Um, no, I, I think, look, if I have, if I have one, ex one sort of experience after, after seven years, or if, if I have one learning after seven years in this space, it is that, um, and believe me, this is, this, is, this is positive, although it won't sound like it at first, um, it is that we have no idea what's coming, right? We talk about um, cryptocurrency in the space and blockchain. And especially in sort of in threat intelligence circles, sometimes we have the argument of like, what is this even good for? Right. Like, what's the purpose of it? And and what I what I frequently fall back on is that yeah, we can have arguments about remittances and international transfers and speed of transactions and fees. We can have all those arguments, but I think the point is to step back and realize we're ten years into crypto, ten years into the internet. We were still making boop boop noises with modems, right? Like there was, it, it was, it was, it was a place where you had porn and scammers <laughs> and very slow modem speeds. That was it. Ten years into the, in fact, we probably didn't, didn't even have that ten years into the internet. Um, now here we are in 2023. And we have so much. I am personally very excited to see how the space evolves. What's built on top of the primitives that, that, we, that we see today that we don't and probably can't predict, right? And I'm very excited to be involved in helping to build the security foundation that that stuff's gonna stand on in the future. Excellent. Thank you so much, Philip, for your incredible insights and all you do for our community. Uh, that's all the time we have.